I was watching some of my old videos and I used to sit like this close to the camera. <laughs> Weird. I don't know why I sat that close. Anyways. Are you ready for this stack? I'm nervous. I haven't held up a stack in a while because I forgot last month. Alright, welcome to the March wrap-up. It's February 1st. I woke up this morning, put on some makeup, straightened my hair, and was like, we're doing this right now. I did read like 100 more pages on my page tracker. I just forgot to track them. But let's go over my colors this month, which were green. Look at how cute that is. I literally had so much fun with this. But um, I'm missing like 100 pages down here, so I didn't do my page tracker thing. But this month was, there was a, a really um, gear up readathon, so I do have extra pages in here for that, which I low-key regret. But uh, there's my spread for the readathon, and then my book reviews, which I didn't, did I finish? I finished. Yes, I did. Look at me go. Wow. Anyways, in March I read seven books, which was the same as February, I think. I read eight in January and seven in February. I'm like, I'm finally like leveling out my reading where I re read the same amount like every month, which is fantastic and amazing and I'm here for it all together because I used to be like read 19 books in one month and then three in the next month and you know, that was really not working for me. So now I'm like at a consistent seven or eight and I am very much appreciating that. I really like that. I did try to read one more last night before the night was over, but it just did not happen, obviously. But without further ado, 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 we're gonna get right started. Get right started. Oh my God, the English is never there when I film. I don't know how to talk, <laughs> as you can see. Anyways, the first book I finished, I gave four stars to, and that is Molokai by Alan Brennert. This is a really, really sad story. I felt, I still feel weird rating it, but I didn't want to give it no rating because I loved it a lot. And it just made me cry the whole time. So this story takes place, I can't remember which year it starts. It starts in 1891 with our main character, Rachel, who at six years old, is diagnosed with leprosy in Hawaii and she is sent first her family is like no we're not getting rid of you you're gonna stay here we'll make sure you're safe like we're not separating the family and then they this incident happens at school where her sister is mad at her and they get found out and the people come to the school or come to her home and pick her up and are like you have to be treated you cannot stay at home we don't know how this is spread all the people who are um, infected have to go to this facility and her uncle had gone to this facility earlier on so she meets her uncle there and it's super fun and they get to hang out and she's like thank god I have family here and obviously she's like six seven years old so it really really sucks and eventually they aren't able to use any of the cures on her it's not working so they sent her to Molokai and Molokai is the island where everybody goes to live out the rest of their days and die basically and this is the rest of Rachel's life. She goes to school, she loses a lot of her friends, she loses a lot of her family, she is raised by nuns until she's 18, she moves out, she learns how to surf, she does all these amazing things, she gets married, she has a baby, and it's, I cried literally the whole time reading this, like, this book is about 300 and some pages long, it's 380 pages or so, I think I cried for about 200 of those pages. It was like so sad but totally worth it and I definitely recommend this. It was amazing. The next book I gave five stars to and that is The Crown of Gilded Blo Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Oh my gosh, I'm so far deep into this world and universe I can't even anymore. This is the third Blood and Ash novel and in this one there is some drama. We finally figure out what Poppy is. She uses her powers to her best ability. She is queen. Finally takes on that role. Castile is like, let's do this. And there is like, obviously just a lot of smut. A lot of smut. And it was great. But I feel like this one really progressed the story, whereas the second one, looking back on it, didn't progress the story at all. <laughs> so I don't know, man. <laughs> but I am very excited. I still haven't read the fourth one in its entirety yet, and I am very excited to do so. All right, the next book I gave four stars to, as you can see, we started off the month really strong. It's about to get worse after this one, but I gave four stars to this one, and that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. 
this is not what I expected at all. Based on how people are talking in the later books and the memes from the later books, starting off in this was very interesting and very weird because I don't think I've ever actually heard somebody talk about it or what it's about, so I'm going to try my best. Basically, Selena is in prison because she is an assassin. She is like the most famous assassin in Alderaan and Dorian, the prince, the crown prince, comes to get her out and says, hey, if you be my champion and you're my warrior in this competition, um, you could win your freedom. You just need to do two, three years of service killing for my dad and then you can just do whatever you want after that. And there's this whole competition with assassins and stuff and I, yeah, it's like not even all assassins, but there's this other whole subplot with like a dangerous creature going around murdering everybody who's in the competition as well. Very interesting. So that's like the gist of it. But I like also just didn't expect any of that because all the memes have different people's names and I'm still confused. And I'm on the second book, nobody tell me anything because I've seen the memes for so long that I just don't know what's happening here. Very interesting, it's very good. I'm gonna see where it goes. Alright, the next book is where it goes downhill. <laughs> just a pre-warning. Um, I read Angels and Demons for three stars by Dan Brown. I don't know, I said it in that order. Um, ha! This was fun in the sense that it was very much, it was well thought out and there was a lot of thinking and puzzles and things to solve and symbols and stuff, but man, this guy is low-key fat phobic to women, specifically. Every other woman other than our main character, Victoria, is slightly heavy set. And I'm pretty sure I went on a rant in the vlog for this one, which you'll probably see soon, but um, <laughs> it was not good. I don't recommend you read this. The movie is ten times better, and I don't think that this was worth it. This was not worth it, because it was just sprinkled in there enough to get me mad and you don't need to read this. No, you don't need to. Goodbye. I'm not I'm not gonna read the next ones. You just like literally stick with the movies. The movies are ten times better. You don't need it. The next book I also gave three stars to and this is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. I read this for my familiar for the Aurelium reading vlog. I have a familiar snake now. Um, super fun, super exciting, uh, but I gave this one three stars. This book was published really early. When was this published? I need to talk about that because it is a product of its time. 2009. This is a product of 2009. This is the base of a lot of fantasy YA adventures. Like, she wrote the base and people branched off of that. Like, a lot of stuff that we have now, it is basically young man in a gang, leave said gang to protect sister. Other point of view, princess realizing not everything is as it seems and her mother and the high wizard are trying to marry her off to the wrong person so she escapes like it's literally the base the base this is nothing interesting nothing new that i've read i should have read this in 2009 it would have been way better back then because it would have been new and fresh but it's no longer new and fresh still really like it still going to continue on with the rest of them but i should have just read it earlier that's my own fault, honestly. The next book, though, I gave five stars to, and that is The Sword of Summer. This is the first Magnus Chase in the Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan. Obviously, it's Rick Riordan. I just, like, gave it five stars because it's him. But this was super, super fun. This was also for my Aurelium gear up, and it was for a sword, because there's a sword on the cover. Obviously, it's called The Sword of Summer. Anyways, in this one, we follow Magnus Chase, who gets attacked on a bridge by Sirt and dies and then he wakes up in Valhalla and is like this is weird what what is happening my favorite part about this was that Annabeth Chase is his cousin and there's this whole conversation at the end where like no you tell first no you tell first no you tell first but they both know what's going on and it's very fun and I want to read that conversation if that conversation exists somewhere please somebody tell me because I've looked in the second book and it is not there and I need that conversation in my life thanks yeah I don't know it was very fun. And to like literally the fastest wrap up ever, holy crap. It's because my camera started dying as soon as I started filming this. I have one book left. <laughs> the last book that I finished was Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin. This is the second book after Serpent and Dove. I gave this three stars. I know what you're thinking, what the hell Darby. Let me tell you, I didn't have high hopes going into this because I've heard it has middle book syndrome and it definitely does have middle book syndrome. This is all just traveling, gathering allies, the plot doesn't really, 
thicken, I guess. And that confuses me because I've heard that the third book could have been split into two separate books. So why did you put absolutely nothing in here when you put too much into the third book? We'll see when I get to that one, but this also used a trope that I fucking hate. I fucking hate. Cassandra Clare has used it. It was in The Hunger Games. It is not a good trope. Whenever it exists, I'm like, no, I'm instantly turned off. This is not for me. I don't like this. It's the one where they kill the most innocent person to make the main character angry. And a re revenge plot. Yeah, we another revenge plot. Look, we didn't need a revenge plot. We already have a re revenge plot. Like, the whole point of the story is that it's a revenge plot. Why did you need to kill off literally my favorite character and the most innocent character for another revenge plot? There's no need for that. It's not needed. If this was kind of useless, I'm not gonna lie. So going into the last one, I am weary. Apprehensive? I don't know. I'm gonna go in with like one eye closed so that I don't have to watch that pain because this is just... No thank you. And I, I don't know, I just, yeah. As soon as that happened, everything up until that point, it might have been like a 3.5 star or a little bit better, but once that happened, and I knew it was coming, you could see it from a mile away, no, this is not a favorite series because of that specific point. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Uh, why that is the stupidest fucking thing I read this month. <laughs> Other than like literally, literally, seriously guys, disappointments. Um, but what was my favorite book this month? I'm gonna have to go with Crown Gilded Bones. This is the only one that really made me feel happy emotions. Other than like Magnus Chase. Magnus Chase was also happy emotions all around. So we're gonna go with these two. These are my favorite books this month. I would love to know what your favorite book was in March. Yeah, March. It's April. I have to change my calendar now. Whew. Yeah. Welcome to April. I'm excited for April. Anyways, so these are my favorite books. What were yours? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was entertaining because I was angry reading in March. Other than like these two, I was sad, I was angry, I felt all the emotions, and I was full of disappointment. I don't think I've read so many three-star books in a month. Normally I know my reading tastes better than that. Oh well, it happens. It's a fun time. I hope that April is so much better. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a wonderful March and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!